Okay, <laughs> Mr. Jam Carr. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so we're here at your beautiful place here in Savannah, right along the river. Yes, sir. And uh, let's see about, uh, I got a few questions and uh, just a little bit about your life and uh, your business and your, your philosophy and some advice that you could maybe <laughs> uh, give me and the younger people coming up about, uh, about life and uh, how to... Uh, how to be successful. What's your philosophy on business? Is that, have you got one or what's, just a, just a short answer on that one. <laughs> I mean, it's probably a long answer, but. Well, it's, uh, whatever you start, you gotta finish. What you start, you gotta finish. That's right. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's a good, that's a good one. Whatever you get into, you need to be prepared to go to the limit. If, you, if you're not being able to put everything into it, you need to get another Get another idea. Start something. Uh, what a little bit about your career? What what was it, what have you what did you do in in business in career? Well, I really got my start as young as a young man, a young kid, in 4-H club. In 4-H club. And what I learned in 4-H club kind of set the pace on everything I've done. I went on to uh, be the state uh, soil conservation winner. Okay. I carried my my beef cow, a beef calf that. Uh, we won the grand champion here in Savannah, and I carried him to Nashville, and uh, I got beat in the in the Hereford class. But when they got to the class that had fed and bred on the farm, I was a championship uh, in that because the other guy had bought his calf somewhere else. Oh. And, so it showed me to just keep on. You might win one thing and and lose another, but you you keep struggling. So uh, uh -huh. I got I got involved in that and. After after I went on to college, uh, at Martin, uh, uh, Pop had a little trouble there at equilibrium when I pulled out one one semester, and uh, was helping him. And I was one of these that they get the paper and I would read the ads and see what was available. And uh, uh -huh. so I I kept looking at things and I answered ads to this one company. Uh, it was Gale Brothers, G E H L, out of West Wisconsin. I, I said, look, that's not John Deere. I said, that's a small company. I said, well, I still want to see. So he, he came out and met with me. I talked to him. He said, I'm going to make you a deal. I said, what's that? He said, I'm going to pay you way up to West Bend, Wisconsin. And I'll pay you way back if you don't like it. And said, let you see what our company's like. I said, well, that's fair enough for me because I never had been to West Wisconsin. Bend, Wisconsin. So uh, yeah. I took off and went up there. But when I got there, it was snow, snow, snow. Oh, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it, Wisconsin. You can, just, you can just imagine. I got up to go to church one Sunday morning and I walked down to the restaurant to get a little bite to eat, which is about less than two houses down from where I was staying. And it was so cold, I turned around. I said, I don't even need to eat anything. I'm just going back and getting in bed. Because <laughs> Dick Gale, and I said, now, Dick, let me tell you. I came up here to look at this factory that you got, and... Uh, uh, I really intend to go back to college and finish up my college degree. He said, well, let me tell you something, Jim. He said, I'd rather have somebody that can understand what we're talking about in, in this and, and have them and not have one that just graduated and come in and put their feet up on my desk and tell me how to run my company. And I said, well, I'll try it. I said, I want to I see. I went in the factory then that next morning. Went on with them, and Dick called me back in the office after I got back. He said, I want to ask you something. Is there anything you can't drive, any kind of tractor you can't operate? I said, well, I don't know, Mr. Gale. I said, I'll, I'll try anything. He said, well, these guys that carried you out this time said, anything you got on, you could operate and fix, fix the rest of it. So I said, well, that's, that's just, uh, I said, my daddy always told me, if you start a project, you get it great. So yeah. it's, uh, mm -hmm. that's what I did. And, he said, I'm going to send you out on another mission. So we went down one side of Florida. I was pulling a, a four-wheel wagon with an unloading box on it and a, a 58 Ford six-cylinder. And trying to, trying to, he knew I wasn't going to go fast with that. And we'll forget, Ori Cocker uh, came in. He said, uh, how's it coming, Kerr? I said, well, I said, look, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go back south. I said, this, this is not made for me, so. Dick called me and he said, and I never forget the words, he said, you fluttered out. I said, no, I ain't fluttered out. I've come here to tell you that I'll work my two months that I told you. 
but I'm going to give you a two months notice right now that I'm fixing to go somewhere else. And he said, well, let's not get in a hurry. And uh, about, about two hours he came back in and said, uh, what I want you to do, you're going to have two-thirds of Arkansas, half of Alabama, and all the six counties in, in uh, Mississippi, and you're still going to have to live in Tennessee. I said, well, that'll work. At least I get, I get back in the South. And uh -huh. So he sent me up, and I did that. did that for a year and a half. Two days when Mr. Reed called me. He said, Jim, you were supposed to come by here and, and uh, have a talk with me on this thing. I said, Mr. Reed, I said, I can't, uh, I can't work with Bill Vernon. I said, he's, he's too flashy and too much going to car business. I said, I've got to do. He said, we got other places here. He said, you, uh, you come on and talk to me. And I went back and he said, I'm going to put you in the used car department. I said, well, I'll try. So I don't have a problem still with that right there. He said, Mr. Reed wants me to get you to try it. And I, I tried it. Well, in a few more minutes, here come the man that I'd kind of, I guess, stashed a little bit too. And didn't want to, yeah, he's flashy. He had, he had cufflinks on his coat and had his diamonds on there and everything else. And it just wasn't for me. And he said, I want to know what, what's, what's wrong with you and me. I said, Bill, I'm an old farm boy. I said, I said, I, spled, I, I spread manure and got it thrown all over me there. And I said, I don't want none of yours. I said, well, I'm here selling cars. Now, that's pretty stout for a young boy to come in and tell somebody that. But uh, anyway, he said, well, I'll do better if you'll just come try it. And I said, well, uh, that'll be fine. I tried it. Long story short, it's, it worked on out. And, it's uh, I had a, had a good career there and stayed there, stayed there with him about six years and so, then uh, Dad was the Farm Bureau agent here in Hardin County for 17 years, and he was just a part time agent, right. and uh, we was farming across the river over here and uh, somebody come in up to the office want to buy some insurance they say well Hubert's over in the field go over and get him and come back and we'll fix fix it up and they'd go over and he'd stop the tractor and go back to the office over here which which is over where the New law office is going to be of uh, uh, Jones and, well, I can't think of the boy's name right now, but anyway, he was the down there to, right across from Courier. Mm -hmm. And we'd come back and he'd drive that. Well, the Farm Bureau wanted to get somebody full time just doing insurance, and they, they called me and made an offer. Uh, and I, I came over here and talked to him that day, and I, I came back and served here for 37 years in his Farm right. Bureau. Thirty-seven years as Farm Bureau agent, uh, agent here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we we made a lot of progress and Farm Bureau and growed growed a lot uh, after I came here. So turn, it's it's just it's just it just kept building up on what I got involved in. It's a nice regard, and served time there and got back out and uh, the part well, you know just weekend warrior what I call it I guess and mm -hmm. anyway uh, uh, I just. Uh, we we made some changes in the farm bureau and kind of changed the offices and they you know did a lot of improvements there. But uh, um, <clears throat> I got highly involved in the JCs here and we started uh, a lot of stuff to, to help the help the community with the parade and right. different uh, different things we were involved in. And talking about the the success in the community or your uh, uh, you've seen a lot of changes I guess in the community here in Savannah and uh, uh, some of them good, and I guess some of them you could say maybe, maybe not as good, but uh, what, uh, uh, you know, as far as the community, the changes you've seen and what's, what's caused or what's happened that's made it successful, Savannah, you know, it's got a good downtown and things like that, but uh, is there anything that you could uh, um, Well, I, I think the leadership uh, and on the county side and the city side, both uh, mm -hmm. we've made a big improvement there, uh, and they got uh, they got interested in other things that was more than what they'd been doing. And the question, or um, so uh, uh, there's a question about community about what what you, what do you want to accomplish with the rest of your life in the community as far as community service or community? Mm -hmm. What's 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 your well, goals? You still got a lot of a lot of stuff to do, I'm sure. Well, one of the things that uh, when I was in the JCs in Memphis, uh, I was chairman of the or of the Christmas uh, orphans uh, uh, trip down to the uh, 
I remember I forgot this Lowenstein store, I guess uh -huh. it was. And uh, we went over there to pick those kids up, and uh, they filled up my car because I was on I was on the lead there, and I had to get about a half dozen of them out. I, they come, they thought they weren't going to be able to see it if you didn't all get in the first car. And we carried them down. After I went down there and saw that, and saw the saw the way that they reacted to these moving figures and all. Mm -hmm. and, and Christmas stuff, I said, I'm, one of these days I'm going to get something like that for Savannah. And long story short, after I got back here, I found out that uh, the uh, carnival bunch in Memphis was not going to have Christmas uh, this, that, that particular year. And I had my sister to call uh, this fellow that she knew that was chairman of that thing. He said, well, we're not going to have it right now, but uh, we're, we, we're not going to do anything with the, with the floats right now. And I guess six weeks later, I saw where they decided they was going to have it and, and do it in trolley cars. So I called him again. I said, look, what y'all going to do? And he said, I'll tell you what you do. I said, you be here at 10 o'clock in the morning. and said, I'll take care of you. And uh, so we got six trailers and trucks and headed to Memphis. Got over there and went through this warehouse and beautiful floats. You know, nothing like Savannah had ever seen, really. Yeah. And I, I really went over and tried to rent one. But then he, after he got over and they weren't doing it, he gave them to us, and we got uh, we got them all over here, and they still we still use some. And one lady said she couldn't she couldn't get her kids to bed without going yep. out there and looking at all that. So, and and I, I still have people comment on that one, and we're gonna get them set up. And we've we've uh, done a little improvement. Some of them we bought some new new stuff, and it. Uh, but we end up with one of the best Christmas parades Savannah's ever had when we was in JC's. Uh, I think at one time we had five bands come in here, and uh, plus all the floats that we had. And one of the things that we started out with is all all the floats basically didn't have the lights on them. And we we started getting generators and rig them up to have lights on there. Now, if you go to the Christmas parade, they most of them have their have generators, the and it gives a much gives much a, better thing. Yeah, there. so I, I tell that. people when I get out, of, I said there is another Savannah. You know, because everybody's thinking about Savannah, Georgia, and I said. You got to come see Savannah, Tennessee. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm involved in a lot of stuff and mm -hmm. enjoy doing it. And be 85 this next uh, next week. So I'm slowing. 85. You're still doing well. Still, for... still, still slowing down a little bit, but. Uh, they had a uh, major impact on you. Is anything that you can remember? Because I guess you uh, uh, that had a major impact on your life. Well, I started out before each club, and it just kept going, so kept that, going, so and, going. The, and that's that's yeah. that's where, yeah, I guess that that had an impact. Got, so got you, got that, you started in leadership. Start, mm, leadership, yeah, the four H leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got into another another deal with. Uh, I've got a book that uh, that I've uh, put together. It's the third book that uh, that I've done, and it's my last one because it's that's your last one. I. <laughs> it's, I'm not going into any more, but uh, anyway, this this book here is it covers. Uh, it covers several things, and this particular book had had the picture of the different boats that we had uh, uh, that, that hit the, this uh, river, and we see a lot of boats. things. But on this thing, it's I've got 200 something pictures in here, and what I call this a, a coffee table book because it's got so many pictures, and it ha has a, you've got pictures about the NASA boat in here, and it's 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 really amazing for me to see what. What that, what that is. What, the, what goes down, up and down the river. And what you, does, you, you, really. have, uh, you have a beautiful view of the river here at the uh, shel Sheltering, Sheltering Tree, Tree Ranch. So yeah. we decided that uh, what we would do is uh, make a little contribution to them where they can have some more funds there. And they do a lot of fundraising anyway. So I've given 200 of these books to Sheltering Tree. And they're selling them $75 a piece. And and I told Burris when I was talking to him, I said, Dave, when you start this and you see you see these uh, these kids right here, that they get four hours, maybe maybe six hours, uh, or out of their home, but they they're the, they're in school out there, mm -hmm. and that gives their parents four to six hours to do what they want to do without these kids. I said, uh -huh. but then you find out that these kids will not be going to school; they'll not have an annual. And I said. So I'm gonna fix this thing here. A lot of pictures of the kids in there, where it looks kind of like an annual, like your school yeah, annual or school something. School uh -huh. annual. Isn't it? In this thing, we're look, folks. We're 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 blessed to have the, uh, the school system we've got here, and in in this book we got the ones of 
you got the, you got the fishing boys, the fishing tournaments. You got the hit man that they're going statewide, and then one national. You got the bowling team, the boys and the girls. Yeah. And they they've yeah, gone. They're up, they're a dynasty they, here. They're a dynasty, and others and. We've got to be, be be happy to see what the kids are mm -hmm. doing here in our own county because uh, it's uh, so I've got a lot of pictures of them in here too and I support a lot of youth stuff and it's uh, and it's it's just a, it's just a, it's just a good omen for me to have something to be involved in like that. But, mm -hmm. uh, Becky and I have celebrated 50 years of, of marriage and we've got uh, we've got a lot to be thankful for and it's uh, this wonderful. is her. Mom and Dad's home, and a message, or if you could leave a message for future generations, uh, what would that, what would, what would that be? Uh, don't be afraid to get involved. Don't be afraid to get involved and mm -hmm. involved That's in your community, anything. your work, your church, church whatever, your whatever mm -hmm. you've got, you know, and and just like the Shelton tree, uh, you know, they got a good restaurant part out there. Uh -huh. Go out there and get you a sandwich, and just just right. see what those kids, how they're trying to make their lives better but you know it's it's you just got to you got to get involved in stuff and anything you wish you would have accomplished that you have it in your life well really you you look back and you see some things that might have stumped your toe on and you should have done better but uh after seeing what i was able to go into and keep going you know i'm uh, I'm, I'm proud of the route that I took. I right. really am. Mm -hmm. And I encourage other people to, you know, to try to be solid and take their routes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I just... Uh, uh, do you have a philosophy on life? Well, the only thing is just be fair and tell the truth and get get involved. Be fair. And that, that's a good, you know, just short, be fair and tell the truth. And, right. and I guess uh, and you know, treat just, people right. These, uh, we just had this tornado, and mm -hmm. a guy came up to me and he said, "Well, Kerr, I've had my insurance with you 29 years," and says they did exactly what you said they're going to do. He said I'm so satisfied it's, with you know. Uh, it's it's just uh, another one. I was in Walmart this week. A lady come up to me and said, "You don't remember me?" I said, "Well, probably don't, but I'd like to know your name." And she told me her name. She said, "My daddy bought me a car," and said, "We came came straight to the farm bureau and insured that car," and said. I've had insurance with you ever since, will they? So, uh, any funny stories or anything on, on 37 years of <laughs> Well, there's insurance? a lot of them. There's, I guess one that kind of stands out with me, my dad was farming on the other side of the river here, and with all this equipment, we had to block the old bridge every time. Oh, we, when you went across, went across the, the narrow bridge. Uh. So dad called, and I, I came up here to the bridge and I blocked it, and, he was bringing all the stuff out of the bottom. You can just imagine we had a had two or three trucks and tractors and combines and everything coming out, and I had it blocked. And they had Archie Gamble store still at the, at the end of the bridge down here on the left hand side, and then somebody put the blinker on. They wanted to go to the, go in the store, so I let him come on. And there's another one right behind him. He put his blinker on, and I thought he's going to the store too. But just as he got past me, he shot up on that bridge, and I hollered Daddy on the radio. I said. Some fool's coming after you. I said, he, he said, he going out and turn around. There's no way we can back up. So I saw I saw a highway patrol in line down there, and I, was, I asked him to put his lights on and pull on up, and he did. I told him what the situation was. And so he got this man to back on off, and they pulled off the side of the road, and after that he got all his equipment through, uh, he came over to me and said, I, I can't ride him a ticket. I said, I didn't mean to ride him a ticket. I just wanted you to get him off of the bridge where we can get this stuff through town. He said, Jim, he told me he was dreading crossing that bridge. And he thought if he got a run and go, he could make it. He said, I believe you're going to have to drive his car and let him ride with me, and let's put him on the other side of the bridge. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of funny stories that come out, but it's... Uh, is there anything else you want to share, or um, uh, if you have any other notes there? I didn't uh, necessarily get every single one of the questions, but... Uh, uh, I may have missed some. I think I've had a good life. <laughs> well, uh, I think I've had a good life. Uh, and that uh, uh, finish what you was it finish what you start and uh, treat people fair. That's right. And uh, well, my dad had a good thing. He said, "Son, I said work a half a day every day, and when you get your twelve hours in, you can quit." 
<laughs> he said, there's nobody can make a, make a living on four hours, and everybody thinks they work a half a day at four hours now, and that won't work. So, uh, so your dad's half a day was 12 hours. 12 hours, that's right. Well, that's a half a day. That's, a, that's a half a day is what it is. Yeah. Well, thank you for Well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for allowing me to do this. I'm going to uh, wrap it up and... Uh,